teaching tonight is um, balance of God's grace and law applied to sermons and counseling. Um, I have seen some of your assignments and I noticed that uh, it seems that it's hard for you to understand the balance of God's grace and law and very often the language is still uh, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's telling people what to do. Now we should tell people what to do but it should uh, have the uh, God's grace to motivate them. So as I said, don't just say uh, uh, you have to pray, but we say when God wants to bless us, when we pray, He's happy to bless us. So start with God's grace. God wants to bless us. God has blessings planned for us. And then when we pray, then He'll work in our heart to uh, accomplish His plan so that way people would see that God is doing all these wonderful things and they are connected to God. And um, so, I, so I hope we all understand the diff, uh, importance of balancing God's grace and law and apply that to sermons and counseling and to the way we talk. When we talk to people too, we don't just say, you have to pray, you have to do this, do that, but we, can, we, we should say, God is helping you, God is blessing you, uh, God has a wonderful plan, and when you obey God, um, when you obey God, when you trust in God, when you pray to God, God is very happy to bless you. So we always have God's grace to motivate people, instead of just telling people what to do. Now here I have, um, I made some new slides <clears throat> in 2 Corinthians 12, 9. <clears throat> that was Paul. Uh, and then he talked about that he asked um, Jesus to remove uh, the, uh, the spine uh, in his, on his body. And he said, you know, and then Jesus answered him. And he is Jesus. He said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. So Jesus said to him, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. So God's grace is uh, sufficient and His strength is perfect in our weakness. Even when we are weak, he, has, he still has a wonderful plan and He can fulfill that wonderful plan. And uh, so uh, even though we are weak, that His strength is sufficient for us, His grace is sufficient for us. Therefore, Paul, he would rather boast in his infirmities, in his weaknesses, that the power of Christ may rest upon me so that, you know, that he just boasts in his weaknesses that, that he say, yes, I'm a weak person, but the power of Christ will rest upon him. That is the power of Christ that makes things possible. So here we see a contrast between God's grace and power and strength compared to human weaknesses. So even for Paul, that, uh, He's, he's weak in front of God. He's not, you know, he's not uh, sufficient. It's only Christ that makes us strong and sufficient. Christians can do nothing without Christ. So we understand that for human, whatever we do, it's all weak compared to the power of God. And Christians are strong only because we trust in God and obey God. When we don't trust in God and obey God, we are not strong. So we, I hope we all understand this, that, that we are not strong by ourselves. We trust in God. So, okay, now a lot of people tell people, you trust in God, you obey God, you do all these things. So what they're doing is, is saying, use your weakness to accomplish God's will. So when people just say, okay, you pray, you obey, you pray, you repent and do this. Now we tell people to do this, but we should tell people that uh, it's God helping you. 
And when you do it, God is very happy and God will continue to bless you and give you strength. So always connect God's work to what we are doing. Uh, instead of just saying, do this, do that, then it's just uh, people try to do it with their weaknesses. Now you notice that um, a lot of people, you know, a lot of Christians, they, they just try to obey God. They try to overcome the sins without being connected to God. Uh, and then they just try to do different things and then they find that they have problems. They have problems relating to their spouse, that they have you know, yelling and fights. Uh, they have problem overcoming their, uh, uh, ov you know, managing their emotions and their negative thinking. They have problem managing uh, problematic people. They have problem uh, overcoming the sins because we are all weak. We can only have strength from God. So I hope you all understand this. We need the strength, the strength of God, the grace of God all the time. So when we preach and when we talk to people, we always talk about God's grace and God's strength and God's appreciation to motivate us to obey Him and, and have a close relationship with God so that He can work in our lives. So now we see the contrast of God's strength and grace and man's weakness. And then just telling people uh, to obey without talking about grace is asking people I'm sorry, it should not be me here. Sorry. Just telling people to obey without talking about grace is asking people to obey with man's weakness. So if we just tell people to obey without talking about God's grace, it's just asking people, you do this, do that, you repent and obey, obey and pray and do all these things. You know, uh, and it's just saying, uh, use your strength to do it. So we don't want to do that. We want to, you know, we want to tell them how God is happy with them when they trust in God, how God is working in their lives. God wants to do wonderful things in their lives. God wants to change their life. Therefore, trust in God and relax in God and don't worry about anything because God takes care of everything. So we motivate people with God's grace so that people have confidence, have confidence to obey God. They have, you know, they know that God is helping them, okay? So that's the point of telling them about God's nature and grace. And we should motivate people with God's grace, uh, that we tell, them, tell people that God is helping us, and uh, God is giving us strength, He gives us wisdom, provision, and reward, and spiritual gifts, and everything. And He has a wonderful plan, so that people know that, God is helping them, and, and God is with them. God is making it possible. God is achieving great things in their life. So I hope we all understand this. So when we talk and when we preach, we always talk about God's wonderful plan. God wants to work, do things in your life, and when you trust in God, then God's plan will be accomplished in your life because God will make sure that, that it, will, uh, it will be accomplished in your life when you trust in Him and have a close relationship with Him and then obey Him, then He will make it possible. Uh, he will work in your life and make things possible. So I hope you understand this. And then uh, in your teaching, always talk about God's grace. Uh, instead of just talking about the law, what to do, what to do. Now, very often people just neglect God's grace. When, we, when they teach people, they neglect God's promises in many verses. For instance, in Matthew 6, 25, do not worry about your life. And then in verse 26, it says that the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So here you see the grace of God here that don't worry about your life because the reason is because God takes care of the birds and we are much more precious than the birds. So birds, they don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet the Heavenly Father would feed them. So therefore, 
you are more precious than the birds and God will take care of you. And then when you seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So when you um, seek His kingdom, uh, what, does that, what, uh, th what that means is that we want more people to enter the king kingdom of grace. We want more people saved. Uh, and then the first, so the first meaning is what we want more people to enter the kingdom of grace. We want to promote the kingdom of grace to more people. And then it also means wherever God rules, that is the king, kingdom of God. So if people don't obey God, then God's kingdom is not dwelling in them. So we want God to dwell in us, that His plan is fulfilled in our life. So we seek His kingdom also means, yes, my heart is your kingdom. My family is your kingdom. Everywhere I go is your kingdom. My church is your kingdom. Then we are seeking His kingdom. And His righteousness, that we want to have the righteousness of the righteous robe of Christ and also uh, our righteousness, uh, that righteousness of the saints. And all these things shall be added to you. So the promise of God is that when we seek His kingdom and His righteousness, now this is the law. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness is what we do. And then all these things shall be added to us. This is grace. So here, Jesus is not just telling them, don't worry. But many Christians just tell people, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And, in, uh, and then they just say, pray, pray, pray. And then, so that's just telling them what to do. Pray and we don't worry. But we should tell people that God take care of the birds. He will also take care of those people. He seek His kingdom and His righteousness who love Him and obey Him. He will, he will help us. He will bless us. Now all the promises of God are for people who love God and obey Him. That's, you know, that's a fact. If people don't obey God, then they don't receive the blessings of God. But it's still a, a blessing of grace. Why? It's, it's grace. It's not, you know, it, it's not our creation because our good works are not perfect and our good works are not worthy to receive so much help and blessings. But God, when He sees that we are open to Him, when we trust in Him, He is very happy and He'll give us all kinds of blessings. So that's how wonderful He is. His grace is much greater than our obedience. Okay, this is our obedience, but His grace is far exceeds our obedience. It's His grace is, is, uh, you know, is beyond our imagination. It's beyond what we do. It's, it, it exceeds our expectation. And then Matthew 6, 7 is uh, Jesus tell people when you pray, do not use vain repetitions. And then the grace, the promise of grace is for your father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. So even before you ask him, God already knows your needs and he will, he will provide for you. So even before you pray, he knows your needs. So when we love God, he will actually, he'll automatically, automatically work in our life to provide for us because in 1 Corinthians 2 9 it says that you know that uh, eye has not seen and ears has not heard and human mind cannot think of the things that God has prepared for those who love him so when we love him then he'll prepare for us things that we never imagined even before we pray he already plans things in my life I saw many blessings planned for me before I you know, I asked them. I, I, I never asked them because uh, 1 Corinthians 2 9 says that it's, it's no human mind can think of. So we can not even think about it. So we, we did not pray for that, but God provides for us. So I hope that we all understand that, that God is already, He knows our needs, and He already has a plan. When we love Him, He will, he will bless us. And when we follow Him, He will bless us. So that is the grace to motivate people. So I hope you understand this. So in the assignments that you would talk about God's grace, and you can see God's grace in that Bible verse or in the whole Bible related to that topic. Uh, what I mean is, when we talk about um, provision, then we talk about God's grace in provision. When we talk about serving God, then we talk about God's uh, his give us spiritual gifts and give us help and guide us to serve God. So whatever it is, 
that the grace of God is related to that. Some people just put in general grace, you know, like salvation and God gives you salvation and forgives you and gives you eternal life and, you know, that is general for that topic, whatever topic. For instance, it's about overcoming our emotions. Then God's grace is, He would give us peace. He would, he would give us strength to overcome our negative emotions. So uh, I should uh, uh, encourage you to, uh, to relate the grace because there are many aspects of God's grace. So talk about the grace that relate to the theme. Not just general grace, okay? Now here, um, God's law, I explain again, God's law and God's grace. God's law tells us what to do. And God's grace tells us what God has done to bless us. So His blessings to us, His help to us. And then God's law tells us God's judgment and punishment. Now, God's law tells us what to do, but also tells us the judgment and punishment when we don't obey. And God's grace tells us God's forgiveness and His help. And then uh, God's law motivates us by punishment and fear. So if people don't obey, then there can be punishment, there could be discipline. And then God's grace motivates us by grace and love. God is giving us help. God is guiding us. God is motivating us. God is changing our life. And then whenever we obey Him, He's very happy and He will bless us and He will reward us. So that is grace, His grace related to the area uh, that, you know, uh, whatever area you're talking about. And then God's law should not be the main motivation. It should not be the main motivation. And God's grace should be the main motivation. But at the same time, we need, need God's law to remind us and to warn us not to sin. Now, when a Christian is very obedient to God, then he doesn't need uh, God's law that much to, to remind him. Because he already knows that. He, and he's motivated by grace. He knows God has wonderful plan for him, so he's motivated to obey God. He doesn't need to remind himself, oh, oh if I don't serve God enough, uh, if I don't love God enough, if I sin, then, then there can be discipline and punishment. You know, he already knows that. So he doesn't need that much. But for people who are disobedient, they need that, the grace of God. Okay, now if people are motivated by, uh, let me explain this one more uh, with this picture, okay, here. Those who believe the destructive, destructiveness of sins and who are motivated by God's grace, then in his life mostly is grace. And the law, he doesn't need to apply the law that much. Now he, he needs to obey the law, but he doesn't need to apply the discipline and the punishment to himself that much. And grace is the main motivation. Law is a reminder not to sin. So in his mind, he can be filled with God's grace. You know, God is happy. I'm helping. I'm helping other people. I'm blessing other people. I'm doing evangelism. I'm strengthening other people. So he's happy. He, he trusts in God's provision and help. He knows that God is helping him. Therefore, he's very happy to serve God. And he needs a reminder of the law that, that if he sins, if he is proud, then there can be uh, uh, destructiveness and there can be punishment. But he doesn't, if he's a strong Christian, he's joyful in the Lord, he's obedient to the Lord, he doesn't need the law uh, that much. Um, he, he still needs the law. But he doesn't need to remind himself all the time, oh, God is going to punish me, God is going to discipline me. So he doesn't need that much of this uh, warning of the law. But if for an unrepentant sinner, God's grace, uh, now he still, needs, uh, he still needs God's grace. But he should apply, and we should apply the law to him more, to warn. The law is more, used more to warn to him to repent. So, um, he, you know, he needs the law to warn him because he, he, is, 
He's not living under grace. He, he is sinning. He is weak. Uh, he's, you know, not obedient to God. Then he needs the law to warn him that when you sin, there are serious consequences. Please repent and realize that whenever you sin and don't trust in God, there are bad consequences. So for the unrepentant sinners, they need the law more to warn them. But for our Christians who, for now, uh, I don't necessarily mean the, you know, uh, people say, oh, this Christian is attending church, he's serving God, therefore he doesn't need the law. It, it depends on the person. It's motivated by God's grace a lot. What I mean is, he is motivated by God's grace every day to pray to Him, to love God, to trust in God, to rejoice in God, and to obey Him and serve Him. He's motivated by God's grace all the time. He still needs the law to remind him not to sin, but he doesn't need the law that much. He doesn't need the law that much to, to remind him of the punishment of God. So that's for a person who is strongly motivated by God's grace. And he understands the destructiveness of sins, then he doesn't need to remind himself, oh, God is going to punish me if I sin. He doesn't need to remind himself all the time. But he has that understanding in his mind. So I hope you understand this. So if you see a, a Christian who sins continually, then you need to apply the law to him more to help him to repent, to let him know that he needs to repent. That he need to... Uh, he needs a law to remind him. So, uh, for, for a person who is continuing in sin, he needs uh, the law to remind him. But if he's trusting God's good, goodness and he's motivated by God's grace, then uh, he doesn't need the, the law of God that much. Okay, um, let's go back. Okay, now motivated by law, the person will be under pressure. If, you know, if a Christian is motivated by God's grace and then he applies the law to himself too much, that's saying, oh, if I do this, if I don't do this perfectly well, if I, if I sin, uh, then God will punish me. Then, you know, uh, when he is motivated by God's grace, he's really motivated to serve God, then he, you now he should pay attention to the sins he might be committing, he should be careful. But if he's applying the law too much, now some people are applying the law to people all the time, you know. They will say, oh, you, uh, you, you know, you, you have to kneel down and pray and cry to ask for God's forgiveness. You, you have to really, uh, uh, you know, that they put pressure on people. And, and what happens is, you know, or you're not good enough. You haven't brought enough people to Christ. So they give pressure to people. And that is not a good way. When the person is motivated by God's grace and he's aware of the destructiveness of sin, he doesn't need the law <coughs> to remind him all the time. And then, but then for a person motivated by grace, he doesn't have much pressure. He, you know, he... He rejoiced when he served God. He enjoyed serving God. And a person motivated by law, uh, he's filled with guilt. Uh, that if his main motivation is the law, then he'll say, I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough. But for a person motivated by grace, he's filled with forgiveness and acceptance. He knows that God forgives him, God accepts him. So he is confident in God. And then motivated by law, would, uh, it's easier to have a sense of failure that he is saying, applying the law to himself all the time and say, okay, I'm not, I'm not good enough. I have not done enough. Then he was have a sense of failure. And just looking at, oh, I, I have this sin again. Now, of course, when we have this sin, we should repent. But we should remind ourselves when we repent, God is very happy. And when we try to obey, God is very happy. So even when we sin, now of course we don't want to sin because sin is destructive, even when we are forgiven. Because when we, dis, uh, you know, like we yell at someone, even we ask for forgiveness, it still ruins the relationship. It could hurt the relationship. 
so we pay attention not to sin. But when people are too much under law, they, they always say, okay, I, I haven't done well enough. The people are not growing enough. They, they're not trusting in God who is causing the fruit to come. And then for the people motivated by grace, he has a sense of accomplishment because Jesus said, even when you give a cup of cold water to a little one, you by no means lose a reward. So we say, okay, when I do this thing, God is happy. But of course, we don't want to stop at one cup of cold water. We want to serve God more and more. And so uh, then he will say, I'm helping people. But he's not proud. He's not proud. He's saying, well, I, I'm, I know that God is happy with me. I know that I'm not perfect. If I have any sin, you know, we all, we all have sin even in our good works because sometimes we are impatient, sometimes we, we might have uh, uh, worry, we might have lack of faith, and all these are sins. So we need to ask God for forgiveness uh, when, we, you know, uh, when we serve God. But we know that when we ask God for forgiveness, God will accept our good works and reward us. So then we have a sense of accomplishment. I did serve God and God is happy with me, but we're not proud. We're not saying, okay, I'm great. We're not saying that. We're saying God made me great. God is causing me to, to have fruits. It's God's work. I thank God for that. And then for people motivated by law, he likes to compare with other people and say, okay, I'm better than you. And then people motivated by grace, he would praise other people and want to help other people. Uh, and then people motivated by law would want to compete. And then people motivated by law would be critical of themselves and others. They, they would criticize themselves and criticize other people. But motivated by grace, they will see the goodness of self and others. They will say, thank God you are changing. They see that other people are changing. They will say, thank God you are changing. You are growing. I see God's work in your life. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So they see the good things in other people. And also they see, okay, I'm trusting in God now and God is happy with me. So I'm happy that I'm trusting in God. Now, that is not proud. But I hope that we all can say, I'm obeying God now and God is happy and so I'm happy. That is motivated by grace because God's grace is that He's pleased with us whenever we obey Him uh, wholeheartedly, sincerely, that we're not being proud. Now, when people serve God with pride, then God is not happy. But we serve God sincerely. I sincerely want to bless this person. I sincerely want to help this person. Then God is happy with me. Therefore, I'm happy. So that's the confidence in Christ. Okay, so I hope you see that if a person is motivated by the law all the time, then he will have guilt and pressure and, and he likes to compete. And even pastors, sometimes they are motivated by law. And they, they say, I want to bring more people to Christ. Now, that's, it's not wrong. But if it's saying, okay, I have to have more fruit, then it's under pressure. But if he says, I'm under grace, God is helping me. Now, grace means that I trust in the promise of God. God is working on the people. God is causing the fruit to come. Just like when Jesus told Peter to cast the net on the right-hand side of the boats, then they, they caught a lot of fish because uh, God has the power to create results. That, that uh, Jesus said that you reap where you did not sow. Where you did not sow, God caused the, the, the fruit and then you just come and reap the harvest. So as Christians, we can be happy. God is doing all these things for me and I'm trusting in God and following Him. Then He'll, call, He'll bring blessings to me. That is living under grace, okay? Now when we serve God, when we live under grace, then what happens is we have more joy. When people are under grace, the law, they always are critical of other people. They don't have much joy. They, they're under pressure and they give pressure to people. But if they are under grace, they, they say, God is happy with me with what I'm doing. And, I'm, and, and then we have more joy. And when we have more joy, that will attract people to come. And then when the people come, they feel encouraged. They feel strengthened. And then we'll say, wow, thank God that when I have a close relationship with God, then God causes fruit to come in my life. And then that draws people, that draws people to come. I thank God for that. So 
So we understand that God is working in our lives all the time. He's producing fruit with us all the time. He's guiding us all the time. He's changing people's life all the time. So He's doing all these wonderful things. So we trust in God to provide for us, to give us strength and to help us. So I hope that we all see that when we are under grace, then we are motivated and we can, you know, serve God joyfully. We can happily serve God <clears throat> because I know that God is helping me. I know that God is doing the wonderful work. Therefore, I trust in God and I can relax in Him. I don't have to have pressure. Uh, I don't have to have pressure of how many people come to the church. I just trust in God and obey God and rejoice in the Lord and then people they sense the joy and then when they come to church they feel with joy and then they are more motivated to, to give and, and come to church. So I hope we understand grace means God works from the beginning to the end. That He changes our life, He motivates us to serve God, He gives us spiritual strength, He gives us uh, opportunities, He gives us provision, He gives us help. He give us people to work together with us, co-workers. He, and, and then He remembers everything we serve God and He blesses us and He opened the way. You know, I thank God that when I share my teaching about this motivation by grace and the balance of God's grace and law and also God's nature preaching method, one person saw that and she said, and then all the pastors that heard that, they said, well, wow, this teaching is going to bless many, many pastors. So they're going to arrange many groups to listen to my, my uh, training. And they will arrange that this teaching will be spread to more people. And I thank God for, the, for those people. It's God working. Because when we trust in God's goodness and His grace to motivate us to obey Him, and then when we obey Him, He's very happy and He will do wonderful things. So that is grace. God will work when we trust in Him and obey Him and relax in Him and rejoice in Him, then he'll, He can do great things. But when we just use the law and say, I have to do this, I have to do this, I have to perform better, I have to bring more people to Christ, you know, I have to. The point is, that you have to. You know, think of, I have to do these things, then it's under pressure. You know, Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But people make the burden heavy, make the uh, the the uh, uh, the, the burden very heavy. So now we understand that when we are mature in Christ, when we're motivated by grace, then we don't need the law to warn us all the time. We know that. What, but we need the law to tell us what to do, to love God, love people, care about people, to forgive people, that we obey. But the law of warning, the law of punishment, we don't need to apply that that much we don't have to remind ourselves of the punishment of God and the discipline of God uh, that much now some people they think oh is God cursing me generation curse you know I said when you love God then he'll bless you for thousands of generations he's not going to curse you see it's only when we apply the law when people don't repent and then we tell them the consequences and then when they repent, we tell them God is happy with you. And even when we tell them repent, we tell them the law, the punishment. But we also tell them God's grace. When you repent, God is very happy. He's going to bless you. He's going to give you strength. He's going to raise your life to a high level. So I hope that we all understand that, that, um, that only when a person is not repentant, then you use the law more. But you still use the grace of God to say, if you repent, God, then God is very, very happy with you. Now, avoid just saying this. Number one, avoid just saying, you have to pray, okay? Don't, don't just say, you have to pray. And then it's worse if you add this. If not, you will not receive blessings. So you talk about the consequences if you don't pray. Instead, we can say here on the right-hand side, uh, God has a wonderful plan for you. God has wonderful plans for you. When you pray, you can receive these blessings. So God has a wonderful plan already. And when you pray, you'll receive these blessings. So I use the word when more instead of saying you have to. I don't say the word you have to. I hope that you, you understand this. And don't, you know, in the assignments I saw, very often people write, uh, okay, you, uh, the, what to do? They would write how to, how to fix a problem. 
how to overcome the problem, they'll say you have to pray, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to obey, you have to preach the gospel, you know, and list all these things. It's just telling people what to do. But I would rather just tell people, you know, God ha wants to bless you. When you pray, God will pour blessings in your life. You'll start to work more in your life. When you obey Him, He's very happy with you and He'll open the way for you to do wonderful things. And I hope you see this too. I hope you see this, that God is blessing us when we trust in Him and obey Him and serve Him. God is very happy. And I'm seeing that myself, that God is opening the way for me. And the way how I knew this person was all accidental, it's God's arrangement. It happens that she was there on that day when I went to the church to do some teaching, and she was there. And then, actually, after a while, when, uh, when, we, uh, and when I pray for the people, uh, she, because she has the habit of taking a nap in the afternoon, and she took a nap, and, and then the Holy Spirit talked to her and said, go and see how, Pastor, you pray for the people. And, but she did not move. And then the Holy Spirit talked to her again. Go to see how Pastor Yip pray for people. And then she went there. And then when she walked a few meters from me, she already felt the power of the Holy Spirit upon her. And then God told her a number of times, listen to Pastor Yip. Ask him to come to train the people. And uh, he will uh, help you to accomplish this mission. So I, I thank God for that, that God is working through all this and make all this arrangement. That's God's grace. So we are under God's grace. God is making things possible in our lives. God is working in our lives to bless us, to help us to go to a higher level. God is doing all these wonderful things so we can all rejoice in the Lord. So I hope you understand this, have this mentality. I can rejoice in the Lord. I can trust in Him. He's doing all these wonderful things. And then also a voice saying you have to obey. If not, God will punish you. Now, it's not good just to say you have to obey. Now, it's, it's not wrong to say you have to obey. That's true. We have to obey. But we always tell them when you obey, God is very happy. So it's better to say, now here on the right hand side, God gives you strength to obey. When you obey, God will remember how you obey and He will bless you. So it's better to, to tell people about God's grace. He gives you strength to obey, and then when you obey, He will notice that, and then He will reward you and give you strength. So don't just say you have to, okay? In your assignment, I saw many times people just wrote, you have to, you have to, okay? I hope you continue to write assignments. You know, I'm very busy in these days uh, because I have to write a lot of, assign uh, a lot of uh, teaching that I have all this teaching that would be made into video that would be brought to more people. So it's, it's a blessing. God opened the way for me. And, but I hope you all continue to do assignments. I don't have time to supervise all of you, but I hope you continue to follow God and then get blessings from God. And then follow this, what I'm saying here today. And then avoid to say just you have to love God. You know, it's not wrong, but we should also add in God's grace. So God's grace, the way to say is, God loves you. When you love God, He is greatly pleased and He gives you things eyes have not seen. So God wants to bless you. When you, uh, when you love Him, He's very happy with you. And then He'll pour blessings upon you that you can never imagine. And avoid saying you have to preach the gospel and serve God. Now, we should encourage people to serve God, but it's better to say, God motivates you to serve Him. When you serve Him, He will be, honor you. He will bless you. He will raise you to a high level. So God is very happy whenever you serve Him. So, so use words like that to motivate people, that God is happy with you, God is pleased with you, and God wants to do great things in your life. And then also avoid just criticizing. You know, um, actually avoid uh, criticism as much as possible instead of, guide people to repentance. So uh, avoid saying this, you have done something bad, you are ruining your life, you have no hope. So that is, that is you know, criticizing and also uh, criticizing not just the action but also the person. 
that you have no hope. You as a person has no hope, have no hope. And then instead we say, God wants to forgive you. Do, not want, uh, do you want to repent and hate your sins and obey God? Then God will bless you. So we guide them to repentance. You know, God wants to bless you. And then if you repent and obey Him and hate your sin and obey Him, God is very happy and He'll bless you. And we can also tell them, if you don't repent, then, then uh, Satan will come to steal, kill, and destroy your life. Do you want Satan to steal and kill and destroy? Now, it's not wrong to say that. As long as we also tell them God's grace. When you obey, God is very happy. It's not wrong to tell people what the Bible says about the warning of the law. What I meant was, if the person is already motivated by grace, God's grace is serving God, loving God, obeying God, he doesn't need the warning of the, Bible, uh, of the law that much. He doesn't, you, need, you don't need to tell him all the time, oh, if you sin, then God will punish you. Uh, you have to obey God all the time. If not, God will punish you. And he doesn't need to, to remind himself, oh, if I don't do enough, then God will say you're not, you're not uh, diligent enough that, you know, God is not like that. Of course, we want to be diligent. But he doesn't have to give pressure to himself. I have to work harder, 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 harder. That way, it's pressuring himself. That is the law. But under grace, I know that God is accomplishing this thing. God is doing wonderful things. So when I obey him, he's very, very happy. Okay, and then avoiding avoid criticism by saying, I cannot tolerate you and your behavior. I don't like you. So those are very negative words. But instead, we can say, God wants to bless your life. Do you want to let God mold your life? Do you want to repent? And then God will bless your life when you repent. God wants to mold your life and use your life mightily. So in your messages, please don't just say, you have to do this, you have to do that. And don't say, oh, you have done something wrong. You, you have to do what? But instead, you can say, when, uh, God wants to bless you. When you repent, God is very happy. Okay, now... Uh, why we talk about God's nature 